I'm Tom Vassell, and this is 40 Years of Great Games. And we are in the 80s, taking them currently two years at a time, and we're 1987 to 1988. I was just getting out of elementary school during this time frame, but there's some great games during this time, although it's not nearly as good of a list as 85 and 86 was. Number 10 is a party game that is still played by people today. Scategories. In fact, this is one of the most copied party games there is. As you wrote down different things in the category, trying to not match other people and write things that are unique. This is a concept that I've seen in many other games. I believe Scategories is the first one to have it in, and it's made a lot of people happy. Number nine is The Hunt for Red October from 1988. Red October was a big deal. This was again in the height of the Cold War before everything changed in 1989. Uh, and the Hunt for Red October was a really cool movie oh, based on a really cool book and everyone wanted to be a submarine. This is not a great game really. It hasn't really done well over the years. But just the concept that one player is a submarine and the other person is a bunch of ships trying to stop that submarine. Really cool idea. Number eight. This is another game that's not that fantastic, but it was based on a, such a good movie, and that's Assault on Hoth, which was based on The Empire Strikes Back, of course. And this one, one player controlled snow speeders and the rebel defenses. The other person controlled the adats as they march across the, the, the frozen tundra. Uses little chits and little counters. Today, I'd love to see like a revamping of this done with miniatures and stuff. Fantasy Flight, we know you want to do it. Um, just, but it's a really cool uh, concept for a game, so it had to make my list. Number seven is Legretto uh, from 1988. This is a speed dice style game or almost, almost Yahtzee-ish in nature. And this is one that's still being reprinted today. Very colorful. There's lots of different versions of it. It's a game that a lot of people really enjoy, so it's on my list. Number six, Screaming Eagles. Now, later on, they remade this game and called it uh, Mission Air, I believe, or Mission land or battles on land or whatever but screaming eagles was this airplane game with some plastic airplanes and you were playing cards and you were flying and the board just keeps looping and looping and looping and you were trying to fly to get behind the other people and then shoot them with missiles or with machine guns it was a very simple game but just this concept of this scrolling board really i thought worked well and i and i really enjoy it number five by klaus teuber not that was a Catan, this was years before that, is Barbarossa, which sounds like a war game, but it's a clay-making game. And this, I believe, was the first in the genre of do something good, but not very good. Don't do it bad, but not very bad, as you molded clay models and tried to make them so that people would guess them, just not initially. You wanted your models to be guessed like in the middle of the game, not at the beginning, you would lose points, or at the end. So you don't want them too good or too bad. Number four is Mr. Eric Summerer's favorite game of all time, and that is Merchant of Venus. But I do like it, so I have to put it on my list. As you fly around the universe, delivering goods from one spot to the other, and pick up upgrades, and go out into the unknown. It's a rule at move and move game. I don't think it's as aged as well as Eric does, but it still is a solid, interesting, very ambitious style game. That's Merchant of Venus. Number three is Incognito. In this game, you the, it's best played with four players, as you were trying to figure out which of the other three players is your partner. Once you can figure out who your partner is, you and your partner need to accomplish a goal, depending on what your two characters are. And once you accomplish your goal, you win. And you can do this through maybe a bit of a little bit of motions and such, but for the most part, it's how you maneuver around the board, how you do different things. Uh, still works today incognito. Number two in 1987 is Shark. Shark is a game that's very, very obviously based on a choir as you're moving around and building these corporations. But in a choir, and it could be mean sometimes, where a corporation would swallow up another corporation. In Shark, it happens consistently and on purpose. It's a very mean game, one of the meanest games I've ever played, as you are deliberately trying to tank other companies and make them get worse or get better as time goes by. A lot of fun, Shark. And number one, my favorite game from 87 to 88, is by Richard Borg, Liar's Dice. If you've never played Liar's Dice, you may have seen a version of it being played in the Pirates of Caribbeans 2, where I believe Billy Bones and uh, the different people were playing it on the ship there. But Liar's Dice, where everyone's rolling dice, and then you're bluffing at how many dice you have and how many dice you think everyone has. It is a classic game, still in print today. Works best, with, I think, with six players. A lot of fun trying to fool other people. That's Liar's Dice. Well, those are my favorite games from 1987 to 1988. 
40 years of great gaming. Many years are left. I'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Tom Basil, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching The Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.